Good evening, everybody, and welcome to another edition of the Resident Smart Learning Program. Today, we have Dr. Ravindra Sabnis, the president of the Urological Society of India, would be talking on urology armamentarium, which is uh, specifically upper tract. He would be talking because we have a talk tomorrow on the lower tracts by Dr. Dineshan. And Dr. Sabnis has also actually authored a book on practical urology, which I think most of the residents would be seeking for this during their exams. And uh, this is one aspect which comes up in the Viva OC where the instruments are dealt with. And most of the times we see that the residents, although they have used those instruments, would not be knowing practical aspects of it. That is why this program has been designed. And Dr. Sabnes is very good at teaching these practical points. I think it would be uh, the, very useful to the residents. With this uh, few introductory remarks, I would now invite Dr. Arun Chawla to introduce and then moderate this program. Over to you, Dr. Arun Chawla. Thank you, sir. Uh, I have great privilege in introducing Dr. Ravindra Sabni, today's faculty for writing smart learning session on urology armamentarium upper tract. Uh, Dr. Vindas Sadhanis currently is chairman and head of urology department at MPH Nadiad. And he is organizational head as a president of Urology Society of India. Uh, he has passed his uh, MBBS uh, post graduation general surgery and uh, residency in urology from prestigious uh, uh, LT Municipal General Hospital and Medical College in Mumbai. He is a member of many prestigious urology organization, World Endurology Society, Society International of Urology, European Association of Urology, and American Urology Association of Urology, other than the various societies in India. Has been an office bearer of various posts in the Mumbai chapter, the Western chapter, as well as the Urology Society of India. And he was the second uh, chairman of Board of Education Urology Society of India and has been instrumental in uh, uh, making the urology education reaching to the different uh, uh, urology members as well as the residents all across the zones. Uh, examiners both for the National Board of Examination as well as for MCH in Indian University as well as abroad like Tribhuvan University, Kathmandu, uh, uh, BPU Kerala Institute, Dharan. He's a visiting professor to many universities like uh, Ahmad Medical Corporation, Doha, Qatar, again, BP Koral Institute, Mahe uh, Manipal. He is a reviewer of many journals, Journal of Urology, Journal of Endurology, BJU, World Journal of Urology, IJU, and Journal of Endurology. He has written a book on urology instrument, a comprehensive guide, and a practical urology, which is very useful um, for residents. Uh, who are preparing for exams. Other than that, he has contributed many chapters. And uh, the prestigious books in which he has contributed is Smith Textbook of Urology, uh, Principle and Practice of Urology uh, by JP Publishers, and the Difficult Cases in Endurology by Springer. And I have great pleasure in inviting today an excellent teacher, a man with outstanding organizational capabilities, with an exceptional knowledge of Shastra and Shastras in Urology, Dr. Vinda Sapnis, to all of you. And dear agents, I, I want you and encourage you to have a complete attention to his uh, talk because uh, there are so many things he'll be talking which are relevant for the Viva um, OC, especially when this uh, instrument session is there. Uh, still, you can raise your question in the chat box and we'll try to answer it at the end of the sessions. With this, uh, I invite Dr. Ravinder Sabnis for today's um, session on Urology Armamentarium. Over to you, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much. And it's my really great pleasure uh, to be part of this uh, wonderful uh, programs which uh, uh, USI has started under the leadership of Dr. Chawla and Dr. Uh, Kesha Murthy. Basically, as you know that USI is doing a lot of activities for the residents. In fact, for last two years, in spite of COVID pandemic, uh, not uh, allowing us to do many programs, so many programs were conducted online. So many mock exams were conducted online. So many webinars were held exclusively for the residents uh, online. 
so the teaching actually continued and this smart learning program and this is the offshoot of that even though now we have started physical we have realized that such programs has far more demand and far more outreach to the all the members and therefore this program in spite of uh, this pandemic uh, going away has uh, continued and it has contributed a lot from the feedback that we are getting in usi and from the indian school we keep getting feedback that it has been uh, really uh, helpful so i must thank uh, the uh, the uh, efforts which uh, dr chawla and dr keshav murthy have uh, taken in uh, planning and organizing this program it's really very very helpful so today we are going to talk on the uh, urology armamentarium of the upper tract so our uh, my talk will be basically on the upper tract as a examiner when i have taken uh, exam for last so many years now one thing which i realized long time back that when it comes to the uh, viva there is a separate table for the uh, instruments along with operative and there is a separate table for the uh, pathology <coughs> and radiology when it comes to instrument there is always uh, the students they fumble even those students who answer very well in exam about the cases and this and that management when it comes to instrument they really fumble and why they fumble because when we ask the basic questions about instrument uh, they are not aware of it and therefore that time i had thought that this is not fair on the uh, on the uh, residents part and the one reason when i discussed with all the residents what they said is that we have handled this instrument but the details of the instrument what is the size why it is made like that what is the meaning of that uh, norm what is the meaning of the uh, the thing which is written there what is the meaning of those marks which are there that is not given anywhere there is no such book where you get you get all this information and that is what is actually asked in exam as to why it is there why that knob is like this why this uh, uh, why this uh, channel is this way not that way so they get fumble there and they said that ultimately we have to refer to the uh, atlas of the stars and other thing and find out what exactly is the meaning of that so that was the time when we realized and we uh, wrote a book which was very very helpful to the people that was devoted only to instrument and that uh, was very very popular in fact to the extent that all the copies were sold out and therefore when we wanted to take the second edition we added the chapters of various other things and then came out with the practical urology it is available what i am going to talk today is everything is written even uh, all the words everything is written there in a great detail and in a very easy manner that was the whole idea so it is available there in amazon also it is actually the cost is 1500 but in amazon they are giving discount of 300 rupees so those who are interested can always uh, take it <clears throat> and uh, we are going to talk uh, on that in fact uh, today what we are going to talk in the lecture will be much less than what is given in the book because it is it is not possible to explain everything about the upper tract uh, instruments in one half hours but i will give you the idea and basically the whole purpose of this uh, talk is to give you the idea as to what questions are likely to come up as you know that instrument and operative they go in hand in hand say for example if you are given the instrument of a nephroscope obviously the operation which they will be asking you is describe pcnl or what are the complications of pcnl or why will you do this why will you do that and if you are given some instrument like puncture needle now we can see here that puncture needle all the questions related to the puncture needle will be asked often the examiner gives you the instrument or most often the examiner tells you that okay you select any instrument that time when you select the instrument you should be knowing each and everything about the instrument so remember that there are certain instruments which are always there in front of you and you pick up that instrument because you already read everything about that and then you can answer and score so instead of fumbling and taking tension of the instrument table you should be able to uh, score in that table and that is what uh, i'm going to tell you in today's talk so let us start with this uh, the common instrument that is puncture needle almost every time everywhere every center every hospital where you go the puncture needles will be kept there as one of the instrument 
and uh, i have seen many people not picking up because they are not aware of many things so let us start from that so what is puncture needle this is also called as initial puncture needle or called as ip needle there are various sizes which are available 18 20 and 21 now there are there are two types of uh, puncture needles one is two part and one is three part now you see here there is a two part what do you mean by two part there is a there is a stillet and there is a sheath so there are only two parts of it when there are three part needle there are there is a outer sheath there is a inner sheath and there is a stillet so that is how there are three parts now let us see what is the purpose and what is the meaning of it when you have a most common in a pcnl is a 18 gauge two part needle so this is a most common uh, thing which uh, you will uh, come across uh, which you must be using it now what is the purpose of uh, this initial puncture needle initial puncture needle purpose is to puncture the pelvic collapsal system to ensure that whatever uh, if if you are properly inside then the urine or the fluid which you are injecting from the ureteric catheter should come out and then you should be able to inject the contrast if necessary from the from the uh, from the puncture needle as you withdraw the stillet on and from the sheath or once you withdraw the stillet the sheath which is there inside the pelvic collapsal system you should be able to put a guide wire so that is the whole purpose of the uh, puncture needle the size of the puncture needle is such that it should not be too much traumatic because uh, you don't want uh, uh, when you are making a puncture in the pelvic collapsal system there is no guarantee that <coughs> you will puncture in the first attempt you may make multiple attempts and therefore needle should be of a such caliber that even if you make multiple punctures it should not cause any trauma at the same time when you want to put a uh, contrast when you want to confirm that uh, fluid is coming out when you want to put a guide wire it should be of a sufficient size where you should be able to put a guide wire through it so if you consider all those uh, requirements 18 gauge needle is perfectly suited it will not cause much trauma at the same time the 0.035 inches guide wire which you commonly use can be inserted through 18 gauge needle now three part needle is why there is a three part needle initially when we started pcnl all needles were three part needle and that is also called as chiba needle what is the purpose of that chiba needle three parts there is a outer part there is a inner sheath as the outer sheath the inner sheath and the uh, stillet now inner sheath and the stillet are of a longer length <coughs> whereas the outer sheath is a smaller length the purpose was that the inner inner sheath and the stillet consisted of a 21 gauge size and the outer sheath was a 18 gauge size now it was thought at that time that if you use a 18 gauge needle and make multiple puncture kidney kidney may get cause uh, may undergo some damage there may be more bleeding there will be more av fistula formation and things like that over a period of time we have realized that that is not true in practical reality it was just the uh, suspicion that and it was just the thinking that it will happen in reality even if you make multiple punctures with 18 gauge it, there is no problem and therefore how it was punctured that you puncture the needle uh, with the chiba needle it is only uh, inner part which will go inside the pelvic collapsal system which is a 21 gauge you remove the stillet once you confirm that there is a fluid which is coming out you can't put a wire through that inner stillet because it is just a 21 gauge and then the outer sheath which is there you slide over that inner uh, sheath the outer sheath and then remove the inner sheath so that now you have 18 gauge needle which is in place all that jugglery is actually gone and 18 gauge is sufficiently uh, enough size for you not to have any uh, damage and the guide wire can slide in now if you consider other two things the needle tip is made of two types one is bevel shape and one is diamond tip now examiner will definitely ask you what is a bevel shape and what is diamond tip bevel shape is the one which is highlighted in this circle like this what is it what does it mean that it is a it is like a bevel on one side there is a sharp edge and on one side there is a circle so this is called as a bevel a bevel tip diamond tip is what the inner stillet the outer sheath which is there is actually not a bevel type it is a circular thing it is not seen here because the picture quality is not good 
but there is a circle and the either stellate has a diamond tip or a conical tip which just uh, juts out of that uh, outer sheath and the so what is the benefit of this bevel bevel tip is the benefit is that strictly speaking even if your needle is not fully inside the pelvic collateral system just because one side is little bit inside then if you put a wire it will slide over this and technically even if little bit, bit part of this is outside the pelvic collateral system the wire will still glide inside inside the pelvic collateral system if your uh, needle was a diamond tip and that means if you take out the stellate if the part is not inside then obviously there is no way the fluid will come out there is no way you can put a wire so that is a benefit of the bevel tip the disadvantage of bevel tip is that uh, when you put a uh, when you puncture the pelvic collateral system if it remains uh, halfway outside then also there is a possibility that it may create a false passage and therefore wire may not go inside the proper system so what it was thought may not actually be true in reality and therefore most of the the puncture needles nowadays and most of the surgeons will prefer the a uh, diamond tip needle advantage of diamond tip needle is that it will puncture the pelvic collateral system properly it will go through the kidney parenchyma properly and it will not cause any uh, trauma the bevel edge in the process of going through the uh, thing may cause damage so that is a benefit of the uh, bevel tip versus the diamond tip the other thing is eco eco echogenic uh, marking when you do ultrasound guided pcnl and when you use the normal uh, puncture needle the whole needle may not be properly visualized because these needles over a period of and we reuse those needles so the uh, echogenicity of that needle uh, fades away and therefore these needles often are coated by a echogenic material which are very well seen on ultrasound so these are and that material is required only at the tip and therefore these are all eco marking or echogenic tip which is there which can be ordered separately which has more of a echogenic marking so they are very well seen on ultrasonography okay once you puncture the needle uh, when once you puncture the pelvic collateral system and when you put a wire the, the next thing is uh, to dilate the tract gradually there are two ways of uh, dilating the tract <coughs> one is by the teflon dilators now classically you have seen here this is a set of a teflon dilators now these are available from smaller to larger size the smallest is 6 french 6 8 10 12 14 16 so that is how the teflon dilators are there they are teflon 6 uh, and they are conically uh, conical tip it has got a tip which is very sharp uh, uh, sharp in the sense it is it is just sufficient uh, to accommodate the uh, 035 or 038 guide wire so once you put the, the wire inside over that the teflon dilator will slide in once the sixth number goes in you take it out then you put a eight french take it out 10 french take it out 12 french take it out so this is how the facial dilatation is done now what are the disadvantage of doing this now as against to this uh, particular dilator what has actually come out is the screw dilator now what is the benefit of this versus that and what is the benefit of that versus this that is a very common question now screw dilator is what it has got a tip which is 6 french and it has got a shaft which is 14 french so once you put a wire uh, this on the wire this snugly fits the tip snugly fits and because it has got a screw like arrangement and it gradually increases in size as you insert this dilator in a rotational manner in a screw fashion the gradually the track will get dilated at at one go in one step the track will dilate get dilated from 6 to 14 size so that is a benefit that it is a sort of a one step dilator now if you see the teflon dilator if you have to go to directly 14 on a guide wire it will not go because the needle is the tip is not sharp and therefore you necessarily have to uh, put a gradual dilatation otherwise directly if you try to put a 14 number uh, catheter you will have to use force and in the process the wire may get kinked or the parenchyma may get damaged and the wire uh, uh, can get uh, become a zigzag wire so that is a benefit of the screw dilator however in reality the even bigger dilator if you have a experience can also be inserted in a 
uh, one step manner but the benefit of screw dilator is that it is the one step dilator now what you can see what you are seeing here is the another screw dilator which is of a bigger size now this bigger size dilator is for the one step pcnl track dilatation this was only initial dilatation this is a track dilatation what is the difference that these are higher sizes uh, dilatation these are typically 18 22 24 like that size dilators are there that also uh, the tip is smaller and in the screw shape manner it has a increasing shaft so inserting this dilator is much easier now you see here that the tip is not six french but it is a eight french you see here eight here it was six so this necessarily will go on the uh, guide wire guide wires are typically uh, 0235 or 0038 inches whereas this if you pass it on a guide wire it is not appropriate because the hole at the tip is much bigger in the process if you pass it in the on a guide wire the parenchyma will get damaged and you will not be able to insert this uh, this dilator properly and therefore on the guide wire you have to pass this white color cobra catheter which is a 8 french size 8 french with the force with the conical tip you can insert into the parenchyma park it to the pc system and on that you pass a screw dilator which is again a one step dilator and uh, and you can at one go you can dilate it uh, from uh, 8 french to 18 french and there are different sizes which are there select whichever you want to use it but that should be on the cobra catheter so this is a screw dilator this is a uh, amplage dilator the cobra catheter next instrument which is commonly kept is the alkin needle and the alkin sheath why this is commonly kept and what is the use of this if you see the this is called as alkin needle alkin needle is a conical uh, hollow needle which has got a conical tip this tip is accommodator or this sufficient enough just sufficient uh, to be passed on the guide wire again same type guide wire length of this needle you can see is much larger as compared to the alkin sheath so how what is the purpose of this and how to how to use this once you make a puncture once you make a uh, guide wire once you pass a guide wire over that uh, see this alkin sheath is a 8 french size and alkin needle is a 10 french size so sometimes 8 french size does not uh, go with that ease so you may have to dilate it by teflon dilator or screw dilator up to 8 french or 10 french on that this wire this uh, needle will slide it properly on the guide wire alkin needle has to be inserted through alkin sheath you understand so this will go inside this and that is how the whole assembly is to be inserted and therefore this is a 10 french and this is 8 french 8 french will go from inside the purpose of this is that once you pass it over the wire once this goes inside the pelvic arachal system uh, now you slide this alkin needle over the wire to so that this tip goes inside the pelvic arachal system when you are passing this initially only this much part will go inside so you don't have to insert a thick uh, 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 thick uh, sheet over uh, over the needle once you confirm that it is gone inside properly then you slide and then take out this alkin needle so now you have a wire which is coming out from the sheet and you have a 10 french wire 10 french sheet the uh, 10 french cannula or the alkin sheet tip of which is inside and the other is the lure lock uh, thing which is outside now what is the purpose of doing all this is that now you put a safety wire mm -hmm. you have the sufficient space inside you have one wire which is there inside the pelvic arachal system you have the another wire now you put in, in inside the pelvic arachal system so now you have two wires which are actually coming out from the alkin uh, sheath and now once you put a wire inside the two wires inside you take out this alkin uh, sheath so now you have a skin incision through which two wires are coming in coming outside you keep uh, one wire parked outside and on another another wire now you start dilating so purpose of alkin needle and alkin sheath is to put the <coughs> second safety wire inside and uh, and then you start working on the one separate other uh, wire which is a working wire so that is the purpose of 
the uh, uh, alkin needle and alkin sheath the other thing is now once you do that once you put a once you make a puncture once you make a, a wire inside once you uh, dilate the tract up to 14 french either by the screw dilator put a alkin needle put a safety wire now you have wire inside now there are multiple ways of doing the tract dilatation as you know in pcnl every procedure of pcnl requires the tract dilatation what are the various ways of doing tract dilatation one way is the telescopic dilatation one way is the the uh, emplard's uh, conventional uh, or sequential dilatation and third way is the one step uh, dilatation either by balloon or by the screw dilator so a telescopic dilatation a sequential dilatation and the one step balloon dilatation now if you see the telescopic dilatation it is by the emplard's telescopic dilators this is also a common instrument which i am sure many of you must be using it how this is what are the parts of this instrument parts of this instrument is the alkin rod now you see this specific rod it has got a specific size this is a shaft this this is called a shaft of the alkin rod and this is called as a knob of the alkin rod so alkin rod consists of a knob and and it has got a shaft the shaft is 7 french and the knob is 9 french you can see here that this is a rod this is the shaft this is a knob which is 9 french so this this shaft with a 9 french uh, knob goes on the wire once you have dilated the uh, tract with the uh, either screw dilator or with the uh, telescopic dilators i mean sorry the alkin dilator or with one step dilator uh, dilator or with teflon dilator you have dilated the tract up to 10 12 14 size which is easy to dilate and then you put a rod this rod is 9 9 in french in diameter and therefore this rod has no sharpness unless and until the tract is dilated up to 10 french it will not slide properly it will not create its own path like other conical structures and therefore if you want to insert the alkin rod you necessarily have to dilate the tract at least up to 10 french once you have dilated up to 10 french then the alkin rod will go inside and then you have a multiple uh, telescopic dilators these are these are uh, from the size the minimum size is 9 and the uh, gap of 3 so you have smallest one is 9 12 15 18 21 24 so that is called as a alkins uh, telescopic dilator set there are another 27 and there are another 30 size uh, dilators available but that is not a part of a set that you have to order specifically and then you can get it now why this particular sizes and what is the purpose of all this uh, dilators now purpose is that one question is that <clears throat> what are the parts of this alkin telescopic dilator this is a shaft and this is a rough end you see now this is a serrated end whereas this is a smooth end smooth part of the dilator why this is serrated why it is not smooth all throughout is because when you are doing the dilatation and when you are passing the dilator one over another you hold this uh, dilator here in your fingers and therefore if it is smooth you will not get that grip you have close your fingers and you have to have a grip unless you have a grip you can slide you can't slide it because you are you are actually dilating the parenchyma some sort of a force is required and therefore to give that uh, necessary grip they have made the distal uh, end of the dilators uh, serrated uh so that you can get a proper grip the smallest dilator is 9 french and therefore the knob is 9 french so how it is designed is that when you have a rod inside and when when you put a smallest dilator the smallest dilator will never go beyond the alkin uh, knob beyond the uh, knob of the rod because this is 9 french it just cannot overslide on this because it will get stuck at this point so that is a safety mechanism when you know on the fluoroscopy that your knob is there your rod is there you push the dilator and it will automatically stop at this point now the other subsequent designs of this uh, telescopic dilator is made in such a way that this telescopic dilator will be snugly fitting uh, this is 
this is uh, 12, this will be snugly fitting on the 9. So if you want to pass this over this, this is getting stuck at here. This design is such that this will never bypass the 9 French. So it is not that this is 12 French and therefore it will bypass over the 9 French and you will go beyond. No, the tip is made in such a way that it will be snugly fitting over the outer diameter of the 9 French. And therefore, subsequently, all the dilators are designed and manufactured in such a way that they will never, never slide over another and overshoot. So if you see the cross section of all the dilators in place, you will see that this is a knob. This is a 9, 12, 15, uh, 18, 21, like that, they will stop. Even if you want to push it, the knob will keep going forward but the, dil uh, the dilator will never go beyond the knob. That is how the design is. And that is what is the safety of the dilator. So in short, the telescopic dilators are the dilatation method in such a way that they will pass over uh, one over another. Okay, so that is one method of dilating the PCNL track. The other method is the Amplard's uh, dilatation. What is this system? There are, as I said, there are three systems. One is telescopic dilatation. One is the conventional dilatation. And the other one is the uh, one-step dilatation. Now, what is the meaning of the sequential dilatation? Now, sequential dilatation is that you put a wire. Over that, you put this uh, Cobra catheter. And the Cobra catheter has an eight French uh, size. We saw that eight French uh, size. The dilator, each and every dilator, this is available from 14. You have a telescopic facial dilators. And after 14, these are called as Amplard's dilators. These are from 16 frames to whatever size you want. There are up to 32, 34, whatever size you want, they are available. The tip is 8 frames. You understand? So this is a Cobra catheter. And therefore, this, this Cobra, this dilator will grow over the Cobra catheter very uh, of the outer size of the cobra catheter so that is how this is designed now how this dilatation is to be done like a sequential dilatation like what we saw in the facial dilator you pass a cobra catheter over the wire and now the it is gone into the pelvic calcial system now you take this dilator say 16 french you have dilated up to 14 french now you put 16 number take it out put 18 number take it out put 20 take it out 24 23 whatever size you want. So sequential. So sequential means you put one, remove it, put another, remove it, put third, put another, remove it like that. It is sequential manner. It is not one over other. It is one by one in sequence you put it. The disadvantage of sequential dilatation is that it is time consuming. You want to put one dilator, take it out, put another, take it out, put third, take it out, put fourth, take it out. So that is time consuming. The, the other biggest disadvantage is that when you dilate the tract up to 16, 18, 20, whatever dilatation, and when you withdraw, the parenchyma which you have dilated up to 20 is now without any tamponade. And therefore, the moment you take out this uh, dilator, that parenchyma will start bleeding until you put a next dilator inside. So whatever a few seconds which are lost <coughs> in between, they will be bleeding. That bleeding actually will go into pelvic cholesterol system. That bleeding may come outside the uh, thing. And in turn, there will be more blood loss. In turn, when you go inside the pelvic cholesterol system, you will find that there are a lot of clots inside. So that you don't want to happen. And that is why that is a disadvantage of uh, the Amplard's dilatation system. Now, having done the <coughs> dilatation, say you want to put a 24 size or 28 size uh, nephroscope. So you put a 28 size Amplard's uh, dilator inside and then the corresponding Amplard sheath is there. So each dilator will have its own sheath, which is snugly fitting on that. If you put a, a bigger, a smaller size dilator and a bigger sheath on Amplard's, there are two things which will happen. Firstly, it will not slide properly. You will not be able to uh, screw it inside, or rotate it inside and force it inside. And even if you use force, what will happen is that if there is a gap between the dilator and the uh, outer diameter of the Amplard's uh, dilator and an inner diameter of a sheath, if there is a space, what will happen is that when you are forcing it, 
that much part of the parenchyma of the kidney parenchyma will get torn part of that parenchyma will remain inside because it is not sanglifiting and therefore you never jump or you never exchange it to each other whatever size amplus dilator you are using the same size amplus sheet you have to use it so that they are snugly fitting over each other for easy sliding and at the same time for the less parenchymal injury okay so that is about the amplus dilator and that is about the telescopic dilator remember this is the amplus dilator set which also has the uh, cobra catheter which also has the facial dilators as we saw from 6 8 10 12 14 14 and then from 16 you have a this size uh, the dilator 16 18 20 right up to 35 36 whatever there are many uh, sizes nowadays we don't use the bigger size but previously uh, all big sizes dilators were there and those were corresponding amplus sheet which is there so that is another instrument which is to be remembered third thing which i said uh, the method of dilatation is the uh, one step dilatation as we saw uh, some time back is that there are screw dilators which are available and that can be uh, used as uh, one step dilator because of the screw like design it is easy to slide and therefore at one go you go whatever size 18 or 22 or whatever size you want to use you can put it the other method of uh, using the single step dilator is the balloon dilator which in our country is not popular but it is extremely popular outside in abroad why it is not popular here is because it is very expensive it is use and throw type of uh, thing disposable type of thing how it is done it has got a seven french catheter so make a puncture dilate up to seven eight eight french after putting a wire and once you dilate that you put this uh, catheter over here uh, you see that amplus uh, sheet whatever corresponding amplus sheet is already slided uh, uh, loaded over here now once you put this sheet now you insert the balloon here there is a separate balloon which goes inside inside you can see here that there is a this is the uh, sheet over that the balloon uh, i mean this balloon is already there you have the markings which are there of the balloon make sure that uh, half a uh, little bit part of the system of the balloon is inside which is a radio pick mark so once you put this the balloon you can inflate the balloon through this you know for this is for making putting the contrast and this is for putting the balloon balloon is to be injected with the pressure and as you inflate see balloon is from here to here say for example from here to here <coughs> as you inflate the balloon on the fluoroscopy with the contrast you will see that this size uh, tract is dilated so at one go it will get dilated once it gets dilated now you slide the amplus over that uh, dilated portion it's a very hard under tension the balloon it has got very high force so slide over the amplus over that once you slide over and see that uh, this Uh, deflate the balloon and take out the whole uh, sheet now you have wire and you have amplus which is there in place so that is how the balloon dilatation is done different sizes balloon are available uh, we don't use it and therefore there is no point in uh, discussing that uh, because it will never be kept in the uh, exam but you must know that there is something called as balloon dilatation once you put the amplus system next instrument which is relevant for the upper tract uh, uh, thing is the nephroscope this is the old nephroscope old type old design of stars nephroscope in almost every medical college or in every teaching institute you will find that this instrument is there so you should get familiar to this uh, nephroscope what are the parts of this nephroscope you see here it is just a highlighted this is a 26 french uh, nephroscope it has got the angled right angled angle nephroscope or a telescope and it has got a sheet now there are two types of sheet 26 uh, size sheet and the 24 so that sheet is to be uh, fitted over this uh, telescope or a nephroscope whatever you call it once you fit it over the whole assembly becomes a 26 uh, french size with the telescope inside it has got a outer channel it has got a inner channel and that is how the thing will work this has got the instrument channel so in instrument channel in a 26 french size is a 12 french channel okay 
So 24 size or a 26 12 range instrument channel. This is a light pillar. This is a telescope, which is either zero degree, three degree, five degree, seven degree. Every company has their own method, but that is how the uh, the nephroscope is designed. It has got uh, two channels. One is uh, this is for water going inside, and the other one is for water coming uh, outside. Okay, so this can be used. This can be used through amplat sheet. Okay, so through amplat sheet, it becomes the open system. Uh, there are certain uh, sheets which are available, which has got a serration like a continuous irrigation sheet. So if you don't want to use it, it can be used with the uh, without amplats also when it becomes a closed system. All right. So this is what is about the uh, sheet uh, and the nephroscope. So this is typically a stars nephroscope. Now, when you come to the wolf nephroscope, uh, this also you must uh, know when you are appearing for the exam, there are different sizes of the wolf nephroscope which are there. Now, this is a 24 size, 20, 18, 14, whatever size there are size, but this is a standard uh, nephroscope of a 24 size. What is the difference between the stars nephroscope and the uh, wolf nephroscope? If you see here, for the stars nephroscope to be utilized, you have to insert a sheath over this nephroscope because when you put a water inside, the whole water will come out from here and it will spill over. So if you can't just insert this through amplat sheet and start doing procedure. <coughs> uh, you necessarily have to have the sheath and therefore the water will go from here, will go inside the sheath and that is how the <coughs> irrigation will go inside the pelvic arachnoid system. However, in the, uh, in the uh, wolf design, there is a water inlet inside and this inlet is covered. So the, the sheath which is there, there is an outer covering which is integrated covering. <coughs> so this, is, this cannot be detached. This is an integrated covering. And therefore, the water which is coming from here through this uh, space inside is actually going inside. And therefore, the nephroscope of wolf itself is a self-sufficient unit to be used as a, as a full-fledged nephroscope sheath. Okay, so this you can put inside the implants uh, uh, sheath and you can start using it. All wolf nephroscopes are designed inside, although they always have the uh, sheath which they provide, which can be fitted over it. But that uh, sheet, even if you don't buy or even if you don't use it, it is perfectly okay. This is a self-sufficient uh, unit. It has got an inlet and uh, you don't need outlet because the water is coming outside from the, by the side of nephroscope from the amplats. So these are different sizes. This is the standard nephroscope. This is the uh, 20, 20 French uh, size uh, Dresden nephroscope, which has got a bigger channel. The advantage of this is that it is sort of a mini miniaturized scope, but it it go uh, it accepts or accommodates the adult size instrument accessories like forceps, uh, like uh, ultrasonic probe or the lithoclast probe. Whatever bigger size standard will accept, it will accept. So it has got a bigger channel. It has got a smaller size. So it is a it is excellent in design. Then of course there are eighteen and fourteen uh, French. Uh, sizes which are available, which are not the uh, classical mini uh, PCNL, but they are something in between a slender nephroscope type thing. So this is what I was talking about the uh, wolf nephroscope. This is the 12 degree. Every company has their own uh, uh, view, viewing angle. It can be five range, it, uh, five degree, it can be eight degree, it can be 12 degree. That is, that is, that is not much relevant. So this becomes a self-sufficient unit. It has got an inlet, it has got integrated this, so water will come out and that is how you use the nephroscope. These are the accessories. What are the common accessories? And these accessories also can be kept in the uh, Viva table. The accessories are the uh, uh, forceps. Basically, these are forceps. So these are the, the eight French, 12 French uh, sizes, whatever as per the scope which you are using it, the sizes will differ, but what is the difference is the tip. You see that this tip, this tip and this tip. What is the difference? There are two basic, uh, two types of forceps. One is the spring action and one is the uh, alligator type of forceps. 
Spring action is what? These, these two are the spring action. You see the design here, and this is the alligator type of forcep. What is the difference is that when you put an alligator type of forcep, and if you want to catch a stone, you take a, you open this jaw and catch a stone. From here, you catch the stone, uh, close the jaw. You necessarily have to keep closing the jaw with your active pressure, and then you withdraw it from the uh, nephroscope or, or from the implants and uh, deliver the stone outside. So while catching, while withdrawing, and while taking it out, you have to actively uh, press the uh, forceps so that the stone is grasped actively. Now, the difference in the uh, spring forceps is that once you open the jaw, once you push it, the spring will come out. This is biflange and this is triflange. So what will happen that in the closed manner, the spring or the jaws are inside. Now, what you do is that once you are in the pelvic collateral system and there is a stone here, now you press this, you uh, have pressed this handle. So this will go near here. Once you press it, what will happen is that those jaw will come out and they will open up. So this is a biflange forcep. There are two jaws. And once you catch the stone and then you release your grip, once you release the grip, the spring will uh, bring it out and spring will catch it. Now you don't have to hold the forcep at all. The spring has already caught the forceps. Now you just withdraw the nephroscope. The, the stone will remain caught into the uh, forcep and then you deliver it out. Same way, this is a triflange, this is biflange. The triflange has a bigger grip because it can grip from all three sides. And therefore, once the, the, the stone is caught in a triflange, uh, it will not come out. The, the advantage of alligator, uh, what are the disadvantages? What is the disadvantage is the advantage of here. Now, if you see for the alligator or this, sorry, the spring forcep to come out, it necessarily has to travel this much distance. You understand? And therefore, if the system is compact, undilated system, if you want to open the system fully, this much distance should be there. And therefore, suppose if you are working into the calyx, which is, which is not much dilated, it's a small, uh, narrow calyx, not much space. You have no, you don't have that much space for the flanges to open up and therefore this will not work. And therefore the disadvantages of this uh, biflange uh, or triflange is that you need a space inside. The disadvantage of triflange is that the third angle, the third uh, flange is never under your vision. So you may uh, inadvertently catch the, uh, catch the mucosa and therefore it can cause the damage. The advantage of uh, the um, uh, alligator forcep is that you see that is this only this much distance is required for this to open up. And therefore, even in a compact calyx or undilated system, uh, the, uh, the uh, flange will open up and uh, you can uh, catch the forceps and uh, deliver it out. The advantage of a spring action is that once you catch the forcep, you don't need the active holding of the uh, grasping of the uh, forcep, which is actually beneficial so that you can easily take out the nephroscope. Here, what happens is that in the process, when you are grasping it actively and when you are delivering out, if you loosen your grip, the stone will fall inside and then you have to go and grasp it again. So that is the advantage and disadvantage of uh, these uh, forceps and that's a specific design. Coming to the next step of uh, upper track instrument is the mini PCNL instrument. If you see, this is a STARS uh, instrument. There are, uh, it is available from STARS and the uh, Wolf, Olympus. Every company has uh, mini PCNL uh, scope, which is typically a 12 French uh, telescope, which are six French uh, channel. So all scopes design are more or less same. Uh, it has got the telescope. The design can be different. It can be oblique. It can be parallel. It can be uh, uh, it, it can be offset. And uh, depending on the size, uh, it is a six frame channel which accommodates. It has got a, a irrigation cannula. It has got a light which is like a light, and it has got a straight channel. You see, the benefit of the straight channel is that the rigid instrument can be passed. <coughs> So you can put a small ultrasonic probe or you can put a lithoclast uh, probe uh, through the through mini PCNL. 
or you can uh, flexible you can put a laser so this is a 12 french the stores has <coughs> another telescope which is called as the mip xs which is a 7.5 french telescope it has got a, a three french channel and a much smaller size so you can uh, so if you want to do a smaller track say 12 french or 11 french or even nine french uh, track you can use it the sheets which are available through which you can put a 7.5 french uh, nephroscope but uh, that is just you should know about it you don't have to go into the details of that mip access and a slender and a micro park and ultra mini park and all those things uh, it is not required for you to know in uh, great detail only thing you understand the principle that is more than enough these are the sheets these are the sheets which are available uh, for the various sizes these are a mini pcnl sheet now the difference of uh, the standard pcnl we saw the m plus sheet and the mini pcnl sheet is that every sheet comes with its own dilator so this uh, mini pcnl sheet can be of uh, various sizes and uh, if you see the uh, sizes each size will have its own dilator so how typically it is to be done you put a wire to do screw dilatation up to 14 french typically these are 15 or 18 or 21 size then you put a <coughs> put this dilator and over the rod you slide this sheet and then take it out so that is how the uh, technique of uh, any mini pcnl uh, is there you have the dilator and over that you slide the sheet so that is how the upper track instruments are so that is about the pcnl instrument next when you consider the upper track instrument is the uh, ureteroscopy ureteroscopy is two things uh, semi rigid ureteroscopes and the flexible ureteroscope now as you know that uh, the uh, semi rigid ureteroscopes are manufactured by again all three all major companies three main companies which are prevalent uh, which are popular in india is the carl stores the richard wolf and the olympus <coughs> each company will have their own sizes will have subtle differences but the principle remains same if you see semi rigid ureteroscope uh, uh, they are always described in two uh, two uh, sizes when you describe what is the size of the uh, ureteroscope you you never say 6 french or you never say 7 or you don't say 8 you always call this as 7 6 7.5 which scope you are using 8 9.8 7 8.5 6.5 4.5 4.5 6.5 now so why these two wordings because if you see the ureteroscope the sizes are described in such a way that this is only the tip or the distal most portion the shaft is of this size and therefore when we talk of 6 7.5 instrument what does it mean that the instrument, uh, the ureteroscope distal most uh, uh, size is a 6 French, but as you come proximally, the shaft is 7.5 French. So basically, in the ureter, when you do ureteroscopy, the size of the ureter uh, ureter uh, uh, ureteroscope should be considered only as a 7.5. So unless and until the ureter is dilated up to that, it will be difficult for you to put a, a nephros, uh, ureteroscope. Similarly, when you describe the 8, 9.8, what does it mean that the tip is 8 and the shaft is 9.8? So if you see the catalog and if you see the book, there are various sizes which are there. The most common size is uh, star 7 French, wolf 6, uh, 6 French uh, or 8, 9.8. These are all common uh, seeds which are, <coughs> which are acceptable sizes. Most of this ureteroscope has almost similar working channel, 4.8 or a 5 French <coughs> working channel. These are straight working channel or the flexible working channel. <coughs> now, before we go into the details of ureteroscope, uh, how, do, how do you do ureteroscopy? That once you put a uh, cystoscope, pass a wire, you necessarily have to dilate the ureter. In your exam, if you are asked how will you do ureteroscopy, you say that I will dilate the ureter. Now, there are various things. Why will you dilate? Why somebody will not dilate? Why will you put direct ureteroscopy? You are safe to answer that in our institute, I have seen that once you put a wire, then the ureteros, uh, whatever size ureteroscope, uh, we are going to use it. We dilate the ureter, ureter uh, one step or a two French higher than whatever size. 
so if you are using 8 9.8 then you consider 9.8 and therefore you dilate say up to 10 or up to 12 french why you want to dilate the ureter uh, before you pass the ureteroscope because with that the ureter is adequately dilated and insertion of a ureter becomes easy up and down movements which you are necessarily going to be required in uh, doing ureteroscopy are easy otherwise if you have a snugly fitting ureter and you want you are going up and coming down on the ureter ureter is snugly fitting in the process it will get damaged it will get dilated uh, it will get torn and it can get avals and therefore you want a nice uh, dilated ureter before you pass a ureteroscope. So there are two ways of uh, doing the dilatation. Again, same way what we saw in PCNL. This is what is called as the sequential ureteric dilators. So these are available from 6 French to 12 French or even 14 French. So there are markings which are there. You see here, uh, generally there are two steps higher. You 6, 8, 10, 12, 14 like that. So you pass a wire, over that you put 6 French, come, it out, come out 8, come out 10, come out 12, like that. So this is again time consuming. <coughs> Here there is nothing like bleeding, it's not a track which is bleeding. Here the bleeding fear is not there, but sequential uretic dilator, the problem is of a uh, time consuming. And therefore there are single step dilators which are also available. Single step dilator has a tip which is 6 French because by and large, if you see the normal ureteric orifice, they will accommodate six French easily. And therefore, in a single step dilator, you have a six French tip and a shaft, which is variable. So single step, uh, single step ureteric dilators are described uh, as six by 10, six by 12, six by 14. So what does it mean? That six by 14 means six is uh, tip and 14 is shaft. 6 by 10 means 6, 6 is tip and 10 is shaft. 6 by 12 means 6 is tip and 12 is shaft. So that is how the uh, single step dilators are described. You may use uh, this, you may use that, whatever is your thing, you are free to use it. Coming back to ureteroscope, this is what is the design. This is how the ureteroscope looks like. I don't think this uh, audience requires any description of how to look, uh, how does it look. But typically, this is how the tip is, which is a very small, uh, whatever size, uh, 6 French or 6.5, 7, whatever is. And then subsequently, this is the uh, shaft, which gets dilated. <coughs> and that is what is the size. Uh, again, the telescope, uh, the eyepiece either is the offset type, oblique, offset, oblique, or the parallel. There are three types. Any scope which you see, there are three designs which are described. This is called as offset. It is just an angle. This is called as oblique. What does it mean by? You have a this and then you have again oblique angle. So you have two bends. This and this. This is only one sharp angle. So this is called as offset. This is called as oblique. And then you have something like this and this, what we saw the uh, nephroscope. So that is called as parallel. So it will have a right angle um, uh, a pillar like this, and it will have a shaft like this. So it is parallel because it is parallel to the scope. This is oblique because it is oblique to the shaft, and this is offset. That is an offset. Okay. So these are the parts, and these are design. Uh, it has got a, a, a straight channel. Each retroscope we saw more or less same size, uh, four or four point eight or a five <coughs> different channel size. It is straight because you can put a, a lithoclast probe, straight probe can be inserted from here. Uh, if, if it was only angle, then this will not go. The stars laser scope has the, uh, the it has no straight angle. It has gone only uh, angle and therefore only laser can be used uh, through that. So, <coughs> so <coughs> this is the parts of the ureteroscope. And this is the design. This is the light pillar. This is the inner, uh, this is the inlet outlet nothing like inlet outlet this is the irrigation channel you describe it as a irrigation channel <coughs> these are the things which we have already described coming next <coughs> part is the uh, flexible ureteroscope now this also will be kept in exam see common instrument if you talk of a upper track what will be kept is the pcnl in which you can have the uh, expect the standard nephroscope you can expect the mini nephroscope 
you can make uh, expect uh, uh, the uh, other instruments of uh, the ampla sheet ampla dilator you can expect uh, the accessories like forceps and things like that then the ureteroscope ureteroscope also can be kept as a table and it will be uh, something either stars or a wolf uh, instrument will be there and uh, if you are going in uh, uh, institute in which uh, the flexible otoscopy and this is common nowadays it can be kept you should know about it <coughs> uh, about the play something about the flexible otoscope especially with the advent of a digital or the reusable or uh, sorry the uh, disposable otoscope otoscope will be kept uh, this usually it was not kept in the past because it is a costly instrument some students they take in hand and they are handle with it uh, roughly and the instrument gets damaged so so when the exam when you are handling the instrument we also observe as a student as you are appearing in the exam how you are handling whether you are careful or not if you just jumble up uh, the picking up the instrument here and there uh, we tell okay okay just leave it like that because we know that you are handling in a very rough way you are not a safe candidate <clears throat> so everything should be properly done in the exam so flexible again ureteroscope <clears throat> there are two types one is the reusable uh, flexible ureteroscope and the disposable flexible reusable again is divided into two types the fiber optic and the digital <coughs> let us first focus on the reusable flexible ureteroscope i will tell you sufficient enough only for you for the uh, what is required in the exam i don't want to tell anything extra unnecessary details so flexible ureteroscope reusable are divided into fiber optic and digital all this fiber optic and digital again are manufactured by different companies the stars wolf olympus everybody has everything so what is the difference between fiber optic and digital <coughs> the fiber optic is that it has got the optical fibers which are kept into the shaft of the uh, ureteroscope um, i will show you the picture later on the fiber optic bundles uh, they carry the uh, they are they are uh, fitted into the shaft of the uh, ureter all throughout the length what does this optical bundles do they do two things they carry the <coughs> they uh, carry the light which is put under the light cable through the light cable which is coming from the light source these optical bundles they carry that light at the tip so light is carried forward at the same time they carry the image they carry the uh, image of the thing which is there inside and go uh, that image goes into the uh, camera which is fitted on the ureteroscope so this optical fibers which are there they do two functions they carry the light and they carry the image so image is carried from the distal one to the camera and light is carried from the light source to distal to the tip okay so what happens is that the optical fibers as you know they are very delicate in nature and therefore when you are bending the instrument and when you are uh, using it if you are rough handle if you just if something uh, hits on the this inside the uh, uh, inside the optical fibers may get damage and with the damage of each optical fiber there will be dot which will appear on the uh, on the surface <clears throat> so damage optical fiber you will see as a black dot in the vision because these are the fibers which are not functioning neither they are carrying the light neither they are carrying image and therefore they will appear as a blot a black dot whereas in digital what happens is that there is nothing like uh, nothing like a light there is nothing like a, a camera in which it has to be uh, carried forward the light source which is in, which in the reusable scope is outside light source whereas in digital there is a led light source which is there inside the uh, handle so it is uh, there is nothing like light source to be attached to a digital instrument this is true for any digital instrument light source a small led source is incorporated inside the uh, uh, handle of the equipment so that <coughs> uh, that light is carried by the wire it is not the optical fiber it is carried by the wire at the distal tip and that is how 
the pelvic collateral system inside the PC system is visualized. Now there is a camera which is fitted on the tip of the uh, ureteroscope. So at the tip of the ureteroscope, there is a small camera which is fitted, which actually captures the image when it is inside. And therefore this image now is transmitted by the wire inside the uh, shaft, through the shaft and is brought outside and it is processed inside the processor. When you are attaching the uh, digital ureteroscope, flexible ureteroscope to a processor, this image is, it goes inside the processor and that processor's, uh, processor processes the image and that is how the image is actually seen on the monitor. So this is what happens that when you make the uh, ureteroscope on, the, uh, the light inside, uh, the LED uh, gets uh, lighted up, nothing is seen outside. Inside the light goes inside, the camera captures the image, it comes into the processor and that is how moment you turn the uh, flexible ureteroscope on, you start seeing what is there inside. So everything this happens in a fraction of a second and that is how you see the image. The benefit of this is that there is no optical fiber and therefore this is not a delicate instrument. It is not, there is nothing dot will appear because there is no optical fiber, there is nothing da damage or a black dot which is likely to happen and therefore your image will not see dotted image. When the camera is inside the uh, pelvic collateral system at the tip of the ureteroscope, the quality of the camera which is going to capture the image there itself in the close proximity will be far, far superior. And therefore, the quality of the image which you get from the by the digital instrument, whether it is digital ureteroscope, whether it is a digital cystoscope, whatever is the best quality because it is not uh, the image which is carried through the uh, fiber. When there is a long fiber, there is always loss of uh, the quality which takes place. It goes inside. So at various places, there is a loss of the quality. And therefore, if you see side by side, the optical uh, image and the digital image, the quality is best in digital because the image is captured and through the wire, it goes uh, out, it comes uh, through the shaft and goes outside. And wire, there is unlikely to be uh, any damage. So that's a basic difference. Now, when you have this sort of a process, which is there, when you have a camera inside and this, that, the obviously the size of the ureteroscope increases. And therefore, when you see Flex X2 is the 7.5 French, whereas Flex SC, which is a digital, it has got a, a bigger size because you need to carry all this camera and other things. So if you see all the fiber optic uh, reusable digital and the fiber optic ureteroscope, ureteroscope, the fiber optic will be smaller size and digital will be bigger size. You see the Olympus 7, 8.5. You see uh, um, the Wolf 6, 8.5 because you need all these things to be carried out. Now, when you go inside the pelvic collateral system, there are two ways to deflect. Uh, deflection is 180 degrees on either side. So you can deflect on any side, which is there in all the, uh, the ure ureteroscope. And uh, this is a deflection of the <coughs> angle. So that is a common thing for the ureteroscope. So this is what is the ureteroscope. Now coming back to the single-use uh, ureteroscope. Single-use ureteroscope uh, is now becoming very, very popular. Uh, why it is becoming, becoming popular? Because uh, the cost of this, uh, the reusable uh, digital, when you want to have a best, best quality instrument, the quality of uh, that uh, was very, very high because you need a processor, you need a hub, you need processor and the cost would escalate. And therefore, uh, it was very big investment. Now, with the digital, uh, with the flexible ureteroscope, what they have done is the, uh, it is a use and throw type of a model. And therefore, even though you don't have to pay too much attention on the quality, on the spring quality, in the reusable ureteroscope, the quality of the spring, quality of the sheet which you are using it because it has to undergo the sterilization and this has to be of a very high quality. Otherwise, it will get damaged uh, when you are doing a sterilization. And therefore, that involves a lot of cost. Whereas in use and throw model, 
that cost is uh, cut down you don't need a very high quality it is just use and throw you don't have to uh, re, uh, sterilize it at the same time uh, the uh, <coughs> the uh, the spring quality need not be that good because it is only one single use even if it gets uh, damaged uh, after few hours it is all right so you compromise on that and that is how they came out with the very low uh, cost uh, digital uh, ureteroscope flexible ureteroscope all the flexible or a single use ureteroscopes are the digital ureteroscope so there is nothing like optical or a non digital uh, single use ureteroscope they are all digital quality whichever company you take it it is a digital quality what does it mean that every uh, flexible ureteroscope which is reusable has a camera which is situated at the tip of the ureteroscope okay and therefore it is it is going to give a excellent quality it has got a small uh, light uh, uh, which is there in the handle and therefore all these digital ureteroscope come with the uh, limit the light which is there inside need not be a very high quality in reusable it has to sustain the use of 50 60 70 uses and therefore the quality of a light which is there inside has to be of a high quality here uh, they are giving the limit of only 4 hours or uh, 6 hours and this so the quality of light uh, is variable as per the need of the as per the specification at the same time <clears throat> uh what you get is the digital quality but in the process what had happened is that when you have a digital uh, quality uh, that means the camera at the tip and the single use the sizes had to be a bigger size you see and therefore all the reuse uh, single use uh, flexible ureteroscope you will see they will all be of a 9 frame 9.5 8.6 9 like that so th you can't have the smaller size because it has to carry the camera, it has to carry the light cable, it has to carry this. Now, over a period of time, the engineering has made a big difference. And now even the uh, reuse, uh, single use ureteroscope have come out with the 7.5 uh, French size in which the whole shaft is 7.5 French and still it has got a digital quality and still it has got a light source and still it has got everything. So that is the engineering uh, research which they have done it and uh, they have reduced the size of the single use flexible ureteroscope from uh, 8.5 or 9.2 or 9.3 to 7.5 French. They have not yet gone below the 7.5 which is not possible. So all this digital ureteroscope have almost the same size whichever company use, use it. Commonly the use ureteroscope, this is Boston Scientific, it is called as LithoView. This is U-scope, which is the uh, Poussin, which is Chinese, which is called as U-scope. Endoscope is the Biorad. These are the three which are commonly used in India. Biorad now has become quite popular. And now they have come out with the, uh, with the, uh, uh, with the uh, smaller size. Now you see the uh, biggest difference is the, uh, the Boston Scientific and the other one will give you four hours uh, duration because that will depend on the uh, light quality, LED light quality, which you are giving. Whereas <coughs> Biorad, which is a Indian company, has reduced the size to 7.5 French. It has given the far better quality of the light, which they say can last for 21, hour, 21 hours. This will go, the light will go in four hours. This will go in 21 hours. And the, the, and the uh, spring which they have given, they say that it will last for more than 40 cases and uh, this. So they have given a far better quality in terms of uh, the quality of the image, in terms of the hours of uh, light, quality of the right, brightness, flexibility, deflection, spring action, everything they have come out with uh, bright, uh, with the uh, added features. And therefore, the BioRahad has become more and more popular. There are other Companies also have come out with 7.5. There are some companies which have given the indefinite life uh, life of a light. So advances are making uh, are being made in this uh, uh, digital uh, flexible ureteroscope, and therefore you will see that over a period of years, in fact, this is happening that reusable flexible ureteroscope are disappearing. 
because these are available at about 60, 70,000 rupees. And typically what it consists of is that this is the handle in which there is a light LED light source. It has got the irrigation channel. It has got the, it, you, you have to put a, uh, put an additional three-way channel on which, in which the irrigation will go three-way and through which the laser will go or the basket will go. This is what is a long shaft. It can be flexed uh, on any direction and uh, it will carry only one single uh, wire which will go inside. This is the processor. Whichever company you take it, this, there is a processor. The image is carried inside. It is processed. And from here, it will go on the monitor. And you see the digital quality image on the monitor. There are facilities of recording and other that we don't have to go into all those details. But this is how the flexible retroscope uh, consists uh, of. So that is what uh, I wanted to tell you about the upper track uh, instrument. Well, uh, as we are discussing the upper track instruments, it's already uh, one half hour, at eight, uh, time is over. You see, there are so many things about the upper track instruments. I have not uh, covered everything. It's not possible to cover everything, but there are many things which are there, small, small thing. Why the forcep is like this, how it is sterilized, uh, what is the make? What is the alloy which is which is there? Why uh, this uh, angle is like that? Why it is 30 degree? Why it is 20 degree? Why the ureteroscope is this way? Why there is a shaft? Why there is a stepless and uh, stepless uh, ureteroscope? Why there are steps uh, in the ureteroscope? Why the distal one is uh, curved, angulated? Why it is? There are many many questions like that. I have just given you the overview the common questions which uh, generally asked in exam and a general understanding about the upper track instruments. If you go through this book, every each and every aspect is given in detail, exactly what is asked in exam, everything about the uh, pros and cons of sterilization method, pros and cons of uh, each, uh, each angle, each uh, make, uh, sizes, diameters, everything is given there. You can refer that uh, if you wish to, and then uh, you can score in exam. Idea of giving this lecture, and I must compliment uh, Dr. Chawla, Dr. Keshamurti to have this. We had recently the mock exam in which we actually omitted this part because this is a part which uh, he said that we will cover it on the webinar where everybody can um, attend. And uh, I have given overview if there are any questions in the chat box or anything. Uh, we can uh, take up uh, those questions. Thank you. Over to Dr. Thank Chow. you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. I think um, that was a very erudite and comprehensive presentation. We don't have any question in the chat box uh, so mm -hmm. far. Yeah. No problem. Yeah, yeah. So, so excellent. Uh, uh, I think for agents, what is important is when when you come to the session of your Raleigh Armand Materium, there are two ways. One is the examiner gives you an instrument and asks the viva, and the other way is he asks you pick up your instrument and start describing. So you have to get yourself prepared for both uh, in these scenarios. So if you are going to pick up the instrument of your choice, you should be very thorough with that instrument, whether you pick up a upper track instrument or whether you pick up a low track instrument and uh, you need to describe it properly the way he has described in his presentation. Um, there is one question, up, Dr. Chandla, uh, there is one yeah. question which has come in. Uh, yeah. See, in the ureteroscope also, the question is that how far into the ureter you can go with the semi-rigid ureteroscope? See, uh, I have not covered this aspect because of the time limit. But semi-rigid, what do you mean by semi-rigid ureteroscope? Why it is called as semi-rigid? Why not rigid? What is What do you mean by semi-rigid and why it is not flexible uh, ureteroscope? See, rigid instrument is the one, uh, if you see the telescope of the cystoscope, or if you see the nephroscope, these are all rigid instrument. There are rod lens system. It cannot be bent. If you see semi-rigid ureteroscope, it has got a fiber optic. Now the fiber optic uh, in the uh, flexible and in the uh, semi-rigid is different. It is compact and it is uh, encased into a metal uh, metal sheath. And therefore the damage to that is hardly any. The advantage of semi-rigid is that there is a there is little bit of a leverage for you to bend. 
even if the ureteroscope gets bent, you will see that the vision is good and you will still continue to uh, use it. Sometimes when you are passing the ureteroscope over the, uh, the over the iliac over the iliac bone and going into the upper ureter, you will see that uh, sometimes if you over the exert a uh, lot of pressure to see the stone and other things, when you come out, you see that your ureteroscope is a little bit bent. If you have a rigid instrument, this will not happen because it will not get bent. And then you will see the, uh, you will not, uh, half of the vision will become blind. You see, the semi-rigid ureteroscope, uh, you can go to any extent. Uh, if the ureter is uh, dilated, you can go right up to the upper uh, ureter. People have gone with semi-rigid ureteroscope even into the uh, pelvis and the calyx also. So there is no limit to which you can go. But the principle is that with semi-rigid ureteroscope, if you find any difficulty, either for, for you to visualize the stone by bending, you will damage your ureteroscope. And if you exert too much of a pressure, then you will damage, uh, your, uh, damage the ureter, ureter. But if it is grossly dilated ureter, and if you can pass the ureteroscope, especially if you have a very slender ureteroscope, say 4.5, 6.5, it can go right up to the pelvic collateral system also. So it all depends on the size of the scope and the dilatation of the ureter. That half mooning yeah. effect will not come in semi-rigid, which will come into the rigid. Yeah, I think um, he has conveyed his thanks. Uh, uh, just to add what you have said is, is the uteroscope is used retrogradely as well as anti that also you should keep in mind. The examiners yes. are fond of asking the use how you can use this. And um, I think uh, uh, there are a few more questions have come. A few more questions have come. Uh, so why the telescopes have offset oblique and parallel designs? Oh, okay, okay. So these are these are just the designing uh, variables. Uh, previously, what is to happen is that when the cameras were not uh, there, when we were residents and lecturers, the camera was not there. So we had to see directly through the telescope and therefore the specific designs were made at that time for the person to be convenient enough to see what is uh, direct through the direct vision. Now the cameras have come in and therefore designs have actually undergone a lot of changes. Now the design also is to suit the what is the type of a camera which you have. Some cameras are direct viewing, some are the pendulum variety. If you have a pendulum variety, then uh, if you are the oblique uh, thing, then it will keep on hanging in, in such a way that uh, every time when you are putting your uh, uh, instrument accessory through the set channel, it will come in the way. If you have a direct uh, camera, there is no pendulum type, then the offset is better because it is going to hit directly. So it is all variable in the make to make the, the surgeon comfortable and secondly to uh, have the uh, the camera fitted appropriately. But from the angle, from the optics and other point of view, there is there is not a, there is no difference at all. Yeah. I think uh, you can make use of the description in the books regarding the optic system. This is also a common question with the examiner. Yeah, actually, yeah. Uh, there was no time, yeah. but optic yeah. is very yeah, that's, important. That's fine, and sir, that's actually, fine. what is the uh, what is inside the rigid, uh, uh, the nephroscope, what is inside the cross section, everything is there, design is there in the book. It has elaborately described, so they can refer that book. Yeah. Uh, I think... Uh, uh, with no more questions, uh, 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 thanks very much for your uh, very cogent presentation. I think very informative. And with this, I hand over to Dr. Keshamurti for the closing remarks and then we'll sign off, sir. Okay, thank you. Thank you, sir, for your wonderful lecture. It was, you have addressed most of the questions which are asked in the exam. I think the students would have benefited immensely with this, with this presentation. Tomorrow, we look forward for Another lecture by Dr. Dineshan about lower track armamentarium. <coughs> Correct. Of your I time. Lower, lower track is more important because that is how the discussion will start. If you do well, people will go to upper track, but directly don't expect that somebody will ask you about flexible retroscope. First, they will ask you about cystoscope, resectoscope. If you do well, then you can score on the uh, other things. So tomorrow lecture is, I think, very, very important from the basic point of view. <laughs>
Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Bye-bye. Thank you, Dr. Keshav. Thank you, Dr. Samish. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Bye.